Somebody asked me a question. What is all Venus about? Can you explain Venus in a way that nobody has ever explained? Well, there are so many things about Venus that we know, but we don't use it. When we are studying astrology or when we are uh, giving predictions or when you are looking at charts of your relatives, friends, family members, or even your own chart sometimes. So what is that which uh, Venus represents? Well, there are many things which Venus represents, which you know, I know, everybody knows. For example, Venus represents uh, the wife in a man's chart, represents uh, sisters, it represents uh, drinks, it represents so many things uh, like you know, fine dining, fine foods, perfumes, all these things. All right. But if you talk on a gross platform, in terms of non-living objects, what does Venus represent? Well, again, he represents, he or she <laughs> represents so many things. But what is that one essence of Venus that drives everything? That sense is charm. Whenever you are charmed to something, that becomes Venus. Yes. Whenever you make things uh, look better, feel better, then they are. <laughs> that is what is Venus. Now, what is Rahu? Rahu represents those things which are blown way out of proportion. Right? So, if there's a drink which is presented as an excellent drink that can you know, relieve you of all your distress. That's like Venus. That's exaggeration. But to say that a drink can give you freedom from all problems of life, and this is the only thing that you need in this world to be happy, like alcohol, that's Rahu. Therefore, Many a times we have these questions about, oh, Venus is here. What is he doing there? What will happen? My Venus is here. My Venus is there. What will happen, sir? Madam, uh, what's going on? How will be my married life? How will be my spouse? Or you know, all these queries. And then we get all the things, uh, depending on our karma, regarding what Venus represents in the chart. Uh, but the thing is, uh, what does Venus represent? He represents... The element of charm, which is added to anywhere and everywhere, anything and everything actually. So, for example, if you are just drinking water, it is the moon. <laughs> uh, you or you are drinking something very simple. It's like lemon lemon juice. That's not Venus. <laughs> you are drinking a mocktail, which is very fancy. What is a mocktail basically? There are many kinds of mocktails, but in a sense, what is that? That's like a juice mixed with some other ingredients, right? It's just that, nothing else. But the word is very fancy, oh, mocktails, you know, non-alcoholic drinks. And then, of course, we have other alcoholic drinks also. So the thing is, you have to understand this about Venus. Wherever Venus is sitting in your chart or in, other, in, in the chart of your spouse or anybody's chart, you will have a tendency to look for things more than which is actually needed. So the thrust of Venus is you always see what you want rather than seeing what you need. All right. I repeat, you see what you want rather than seeing what you need. And that is where the frustration comes with Venus. So therefore, if Venus is in a particular house, which is obvious, he will be in some house. In every divisional chart, Venus is there. <clears throat> so you have to understand that that area of life, you may never feel fulfilled. Not because you did not get what you needed, but because you did not get what you wanted. That's the difference. That's the beauty and the curse of Venus. That you may get what you actually need, but you may never get what you actually want. Why? Because that is how this material world is. As Lord Krishna says in the Gita, Dukhalaya Mashashvatam. Which means this material world is a place of suffering. And what happens when you get something? As Krishna says in the Gita, 
when you get something venus actually represents the anartha of lust inside us and lust in this context does not only mean sexual attraction it means uh, sexual attraction gross sexual attraction subtle sexual attraction desire to talk to some member of the opposite sex desire to be praised by the members of the opposite sex my god desire to be liked by the opposite sex desire to be able to charm the opposite sex or be charmed by them oh la that's lust when you talk at a sexual level but there is also lust at an intellectual level right lusty for information why because you feel that i will be able to enjoy more if i get more information materialistic mundane information that is also lust lust for power yes i have prominence i can enjoy more power that's what is lust karma as lord krishna says but krishna is also says that whenever lust is fulfilled it turns into greed okay but as krishna says in the gita that kamat krodho vijayat when lust is not fulfilled what does it turn into it turns into anger krodhat bhavati sammodha sammodha smriti vibhrama smriti vamshat buddhi nasho buddhi nashat pranashati there is total destruction when lust is not fulfilled anger it's you know wrath dissolution complete bewilderment yes and it's like the person is fully consumed by anger so many times we keep getting these questions right oh i am so angry what should i do um, why am i so angry is my mars badly placed is my ascendant not well placed is my sun in a very bad shape i get too much angry well but you have to understand where where is the source of anger it's not in mars it is not in sun it's not in your ascendant it is not in your lagna lord also ascendant or ascendant lord it is not your atma karaka it is not your 10th house not your 10th lord the source of anger is always venus the seed is there because we have this tendency to take more than actually what we need because of that what happens is we get angry because we may not get what we want but mostly people get what they need of course there are exceptions you know people they don't get water they don't get food that's very unfortunate but because of their past karmic activities there are so many people who are dying because of not having water or food in this world away from the glam social media where right where everybody is just flaunting their um achievements right but if you talk in general for a society considering that people are having healthy societies or a healthy lifestyle then you will see most of them they always get what they need but all of the people they never get what they want they may get it 80% 90% but not 100% so therefore when venus dasha is there or if any planet is conjunct with venus or if venus is aspecting a particular house or venus is lording a particular house or venus is aspecting a particular planet or the lord of a particular house then it can happen that you you are convinced or you believe within yourself that yes i will only be happy if i get that regarding this this house or that planet which venus is linked to but you really have to introspect is it is it something that you actually want or is it something that uh, or sorry is it something that you actually need or is it something that you actually want right needs and wants so when venus dasha is there or even in uh, not only mahadashas even for antar dashas and pratyantar this works you you expect way more than you actually need and if you get it even then there's a problem because then you get greedy and you want more okay and if you don't get well buddhi nashat pranashati 
total mayhem in your life because of anger. Anger is basically unfulfilled lust. So therefore, during Venus Dashas, or if Venus is in a bad dignity, or even if Venus is a good dignity, is in a good dignity, he's either exalted in Multricon, Libra, or he's in own sign Taurus, wherever he is, or in a friend sign, or any sign he is, always understand he is, was, and will always be Venus. Okay. So, therefore, the easiest way to navigate through your Venus is to actually check what are your needs rather than checking what are your wants. Because if you see that, you'll be able to understand, yes, uh, life is much more than all these materialistic positions. Now, whatever karma is there materially, that will anyways come to you. Materially or you know, emotionally, mentally, physically, that will anyways come to you. That will come by dint of your karma. Okay, But, if you do not put a check on Venus, then what happens is you tend to use your free will in a very Rajasic way. Rajasic means in a very passion-oriented sense. So, for example, suppose by dint of your karma, you have a very good career financially. and You get a lot of money by doing uh, less work compared to others. Then what happens is if you do not put a check on Venus. Then even if that money is coming to you or you got a lot of inheritance from your parents, but you will not be able to use it properly, make the right choices with that money. You will use it for all wrong reasons, you know, drugs, alcohol, prostitution, computer games, or mayhem, just wandering with uh, friends who are actually your enemies. But they pretend to be your friends, right? So therefore, we should really, we should really understand that during Venus Dashas, we can feel that yes, I'm unhappy in life. Why? Not because I did not get what I needed, but I did not get what I wanted. So therefore, you should always understand because Venus, he is a asura. Okay, asuri. He's in the gang of the Asuras. So even though he's a great benefic, like Parashara says, you know, Jupiter, Venus, they are the uh, great benefics. But then you have to understand that Venus can actually give you this sense of emptiness within you. And this can happen in any dasha, not only Venus dasha. It can happen in sun dasha, moon dasha, Jupiter dasha, any dasha. If Venus is your focus, so, for example, people tell me, oh, sir, but you are telling this, you know, I felt unfulfilled uh, three years back when my Ketu Dasha was running, my Saturn Dasha was running, my, you know, Guru Dasha was running, Jupiter Dasha was running. But I was not running Venus Dasha, but I still felt very unfulfilled. Why? Because even though you are running a different Dasha, but your mind was still with Venus. Yes, that is all I want. I just want charm. That is all I want irrespective of your dasha, if that is your focus, if the only goal in your life is to obtain materialistic pleasure, beyond that which is needed, then you are in trouble. Then this allurement and this dissatisfaction of Venus will be there with you always throughout your life. Okay. So therefore, we really have to read texts like the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and we really have to understand what is actually going on. Who am I? I am a spirit soul who is bound by this body. And what is this body? This body is actually Venus. <laughs> yes, because Venus represents, uh, Tor Taurus is actually uh, ruled by Venus. Taurus represents all the senses, Gyanendriyas, Karmendriyas. Right, all our senses, our experience of anything in this world, that's Venus. So therefore, you really have to understand that Venus, at a gross sense or a subtle sense, in essence deals with experience. So if if you want to have the best Venus, it is in Pisces exaltation, which means 
when you are absorbed in spirituality. So therefore, it is very crucial that we have a daily spiritual practice, okay, like chanting mantras or doing some pranayam and reading the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Bhagavad Gita or the Quran or the Bible or Guru Granth Sahib, whichever tradition you belong to. And we should also listen to uh, our gurus. And in the weekends, we should go and associate uh, in the spiritual community which is nearby us, within our town or within our city. And then what happens is we understand that there is much more to life than the superficial charm that we think will uh, actually make us the happiest. But depending on your karma, you may get charm, beauty, you may not. <laughs> right? But then, what do you do? If you do not have it, if you have it, Venus is like, if you have it, it's a problem. If you don't have it, it's a problem. <laughs> which, which, is a, which problem is worse? Worse, or which is the worst, rather? <laughs> which among the two is the worst? Comment below. If all your material desires are fulfilled or none of your material desires are fulfilled, which is the worst in your opinion? Well, both, both are troublesome situations because one leads to greed, the other leads to anger. Vividasya narakayate. Yes. Three gateways to hell. Anger. <laughs> So therefore, you really, really, really have to understand that why am I at all looking for the, this charm? Why? You can't artificially say, oh, I am, uh, you know, just doing us uh, this meditation. I have this career, I have that career. You have to understand why are you looking for charm? Why? Because God, he is the most charming personality. Yes. Lord Hari, Lord Vishnu, he is uh, he is the possessor of six opulences in full and one of his six opulences is beauty. Yes, Lord Krishna is the most beautiful person that you can ever find. <laughs> Krishna, Vishnu, Ram. So, we have that experience of beauty. We have that experience. It is there in the subconscious mind. It's deep down inside. Experiencing the beauty of God. But now because we are in this material world, we have left his association in the spiritual realm. And we have come to this material realm. So now what is happening is we are searching for that same experience in every person, money, things, drinks, position, everything. But you cannot find it here. <laughs> you can't find, I can't find, nobody else can find. Right? Because that is one of the definitions of God, as Prashar Muni says in Aishwarya Samagrasya, that he has these six opulences. Comment down in the uh, comment section if you know what are those six opulences. Prashara says, God is one who has these six opulences in full and more than anyone. Else also. <laughs> right. But in these scriptures, it is said that Lord Krishna, his beauty is ever expanding. How contradictory that is. How can somebody be the most beautiful? And uh, how can somebody be more beautiful than anybody else? And he is the most beautiful in the sense, not in a comparison sense, but he is the pinnacle of beauty. Or how is it possible that his beauty is increasing every day? How in the universe is it possible? Well, it is possible because <laughs> that because he's God, he, he, he is like that. Although he is the most beautiful, but his beauty is ever increasing. And more than anybody else, right? <laughs> That's contradictory, but all contradictions are resolved when God is there in the picture. He can be the most beautiful more than anybody else but also become more beautiful day by day. It is possible. All right. 
So that will be all from my side, ladies and gentlemen. So please check your chart and comment below. Where is Venus? When do you get obsessed with the needs and the wants? Okay. I am really interested to know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience and some videos on Venus I'll put up here. What is there with you all the time? Just look to him and you'll find him. And if you want a consultation for me, please go to my website down in the description section. All right. Thank you.